Today's Bible study is titled Abounding in Giving. How and why do believers give? Is it from a legal requirement, Israel's law of tithing, or is it something different? Regarding giving, most of the so-called Christian religion would say something like, A 10% tithe is required under both Israel's Mosaic law and under grace, seemingly ignoring. For ye are not under the law, but under grace, Romans 6 verse 14, or If a 10% tithe was required under the law, Israel's Mosaic law, then believers should start at this and do more. Under grace, however, with no scriptural support of this position. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians addresses this topic as seen below, but this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. 2 Corinthians 9 verses 6 to 8. Let's take a closer look at these instructions. Paul here gives directions about the acceptable way and manner of performing promised giving and notes that it should be bountifully, deliberately and freely, and gives good encouragement for so doing. Make no mistake. Paul is not giving a formula for getting more stuff from God. Rather, he speaks to the condition of the heart and motive of one who purposes to give and then follows through. Why should a believer charitably love and give? Well, the answer is obvious. It is a response to God, who first charitably loved and gave to us, and continues to do so. The principle here is clear. If you would enjoy charitable giving, then understand the principle of sowing and reaping. If one sows but a little seed, he will reap but a little harvest. If one sows much seed, then the principle is that the reaping will be much greater. In today's verses, we learn that such giving should come from a heart that truly desires to give freely example, expecting nothing in return, and not grudgingly, feeling like you must give and that being your motive, or of necessity, following through on a commitment that perhaps you really didn't want to make. The point is that God is the ultimate cheerful giver and he wants us to follow him, giving in like manner. Almost as a sidebar, Paul points out that the Corinthians and us should remember that our giving should not be with worry about whether we'll have enough if something goes wrong. After we purpose in our hearts to give something, having counted the cost and noted the ability, we should remember that our God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Believer, these verses are often misapplied to teach what they do not. Note that Paul's instruction is that we should abound in charitable giving as we abound in all things. And this charitable giving is not out of any legal requirement, as there is no requirement to tithe under grace, rather it is the grace response from a cheerful heart. Thank you for listening to today's Bible study.